basic institution of the SAC Bhaktivinam to Swami Prabhupada, the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur. Srila Haridas Thakur was beloved to all the devotees because of his great humility. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, came to Puri and the devotees greeted him, they all came in to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu asked, where is Haridas? And the devotees informed the Lord that he was still in the street offering dandavats. He didn't feel qualified to come in. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu especially noticed that he wasn't there because of his humble spirit. And we saw a similar mood with Jayananda Prabhu in San Francisco. When I joined the temple, he was the temple in charge for new devotees. And we didn't know that he wasn't a new devotee except he was older because he was so humble. And I remember that he always stayed near the back. He would be all out doing service. And although others were pushing in closer and sitting around Prabhupada, I remember one evening at a darshan when Prabhupada then asked, where's Jainanda? Everyone who wanted to be close and had the wherewithal to get close, got close. But Prabhupada wanted to know where Jainanda was. And then when he came, Jainanda stayed at the back. And this is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Trinadapi suni chena toror api suhishnuna amani na manadena kirtaniya sada hari. He says that we should be humble like the grass, although people may walk on the grass, the grass doesn't complain. Should be tolerant like a tree. And one time somebody asked His Holiness Sats Rup Maharaj about that, he said, as tolerant as a tree, then uh, said, but the tree, how is the, which is more humble, the devotee or the tree? And well, Prabhupada said that, uh, uh, Satsrup Maharaj said that a tree is, is cut down and it really, we say it can't, it doesn't complain, but it can't complain really. But a humble devotee may be offended or cut down, but doesn't complain, even though he or she has the opportunity to do so. In any case, Mahaprabhu gave these examples that we should emulate the tree in being tolerant and also to give respect to others without expecting anything in return. And this is the insight of one who knows that Krishna is within the heart of every living entity and that all souls, no matter what condition they're in now, have the opportunity to rise in due course of time with the proper association. Therefore, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that the most intelligent person, the pundit, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gavi Hastani Shuni Chaiva Shupakecha Pandita Samadarshina, is someone who sees beyond the external covering of the body and respects the, the, the soul and the super soul within. Today when we were distributing books, people would stop and they would respectfully purchase a book and I, for, for each one I asked Sudhir Madhava to tell them afterwards that it was an honor to meet them. And when he told them that, they all uh, responded in a very uh, humble way. Many of them said, oh, this is Hare Krishna. This is Jagannath's mercy. And uh, no, nobody complained about being honored. 
no one minds being honored, especially when they're being genuinely honored as spiritual beings. So Srila Haridas Thakur was an acharya in that he was very, very humble. He was mistreated in society in that he came from a Muslim family. So the Muslims didn't appreciate that he was chanting Hare Krishna. In fact, they tried to execute him in a very atrocious way by having him beaten. Although Chaitanya Mahaprabhu protected him. And he wasn't allowed in other parts of society either. The, those who are caste conscious would consider him an out, outcast. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't. When he came to Puri, Mahaprabhu arranged for him to have a quiet place where he could stay and chant. And this is it. And here in Siddhapakul, come to think of it, that's where we're sitting now. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to see him every day. And this is the secret to Krishna consciousness that if one takes a humble mood and goes on chanting Hare Krishna, then Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Nanyas chintayantamam yejana paripasate tesham nityabhyuktanam yogic shema mahamyaham. That for such a person who is absorbed in this way, I have a personal hand in their life. Vahami means I personally carry to that person whatever he or she lacks. There's nothing wanting in the life of a person who is remains humble, respectful to all living beings, and goes on chanting Hare Krishna. In fact, nothing else is needed to please the Lord. So, actually, there's one other element that's needed. And that's also in the teachings of Hari Das Thakur because he emphasized the loud chanting of Hare Krishna. We could see for ourselves that as we moved about Jagannath Puri chanting loudly that people became happy. Of course, I saw the policeman, the first policeman, became angry. And this can happen also, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, that when my name is chanted, some people become annoyed. Other people, they become very happy. I don't know why. I don't want to... Um, Maybe he's just doing his job, but he said, get out of here. And he was very fierce about it. So we moved up the street and we started chanting again. And then I saw a security guard and we approached him and showed him the book and he bought it. And I told him that it was really an honor to meet him. And I told him that he must come from a good family. And I told him... If there were more people like him on the planet, it would be a better place to live. And he had a book, and he had our respect, and he was very happy. He said, actually, you're blocking traffic, but I don't mind. <laughs> I said, anyway, we're not going to be here for very long. And he said, I hope you stay all day. <laughs> and as I was watching the Harinam party, it's something extraordinary. It, it's... It's like a picture from the spiritual world, a movie in front of your eyes from the spiritual world and how the soul comes alive. We saw it during the pandemic when we were on Zoom and people felt a little isolated. And then we'd have some talks, we'd have some kirtan and we figured out a way to have kirtan so everyone could participate. It was called Jamulus. And I remember the first day that we opened that channel up and I could see the faces of everybody. And it was like pouring water on a plant that had withered up, withered down, and then it would all of a sudden come alive. So Srila Haridas Thakur preached this. This is one of the other reasons that he was the Nam Acharya. Is that he said the loud chanting of Hare Krishna is the best. And why? Because it does good for others. He said, even the germs and insects that are floating about, when they feel the vibration, they hear the vibration of the Holy Name, they get benefit also. 
And he also taught that just by the namabasa, just the initial rays of the holy name, which is like the sun, as we heard earlier, that the living beings, they can become liberated. We'll read tomorrow this verse from the Namashtakam, Yada Baso Pyujan Kavalita Bhava Dvanta Vibhabo Drisham Tatvam Dhanam Apidishati Bhakti Pranayanim. And that is just by, or maybe we read it this morning, by the dim glimmer of the rays of the holy name, then the darkness of the material world is swallowed up. What to speak the darkness within the heart of a living entity. And when somebody hears Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, the person, Hare Krishna, the person uh, immediately gets an inkling for what is bhakti. It's inherent in the power of the name that someone can awaken to bhakti even if they're ignorant. Tattva andanam means they're blind to the truth. Tattva andanam dishati, they then they, suddenly they can see. They, their vision comes alive that, hey, wait a minute, what am I doing here? I, I'm not supposed to be part of the material world. I'm a spirit soul, let me dance. They become happy immediately. They're transformed by the power of the holy name. So Srila Haridas Thakur, preached this. He also preached that the loud chanting of Hare Krishna is beneficial not just to us but also to everybody else that hears it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come here to visit Haridas Thakur on, on a daily basis. Even though Haridas Thakur didn't go to the temple to see Jagannath, he wouldn't be um, admitted into the temple. But Mahaprabhu, who's Jagannath himself, came personally to see him every day. So this is the formula for anyone who wants su success in devotional service to follow in the footsteps of Srila Haridas Thakur. So when Srila Sanatan Goswami came here to Puri to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he arrived in with something heavy on his mind in Jari Kunda Forest on the way here. He had taken bad water because what are you going to drink when you're walking through the Jari Kunda? Well, you drink whatever is available. And so some of the water had something in it that caused a reaction in his body and he had these oozing sores on his body. So by the time he got to Jagannath Puri, he was thinking that I have a plan because I'm useless. I can't go near the temple. If I accidentally brush into one of the Pujaris, it will be such an offense. Or contaminate them. And when he got to Puri, he realized that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so affectionate towards him, he would embrace him, even though Sanatana Goswami resisted because he didn't want to, his body touching the transcendental body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and contaminating it. So he thought to himself that when the Rathiyatra comes, I'm in front of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I'm going to jump under the wheel of the cart. And when you see these carts, they're so huge, the, the wheels, that, that would definitely do it. So he had that in his mind and that was his plan. And one day, after he came here to Jagannath Puri and he was staying here with Srila Haridas Thakur, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, Hari, Haridas offered his obeisances, Sanatana Goswami offered his obeisances, and then Haridas informed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that's Sanatana Goswami offering you obeisances. And Mahaprabhu then embraced him. And then he said to Sanatana Goswami that, I do not approve your idea of committing suicide. Kaviraj Goswami says at that time, Sanatana Goswami could understand that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was omniscient because he hadn't told anybody. Mahaprabhu just came out with it and said, if I could attain Krishna by committing suicide, I would have done it millions of times already. A devotee feels like it sometimes out of separation, but then 
it's it's considered inauspicious so at that during a conversation at that time chaitanya mahaprabhu mentioned that your body is not abominable to me because that's what sanatan goswami was thinking he said anyone engaged in devotional service chanting the holy names of the lord they don't have a material body they have a sadaka deha or a practitioner's body and as one continues to practice krishna consciousness the body becomes transcendental based on the fact aparabdha phalam bhaptam kutam bijam phalon mukam pramenaiva priliyante kramenaiva priliyante vishnu bhakti ratatmanam that step by step as one chants the holy names of the lord then all of one's karma becomes eradicated including the prarabdha karma which means the present body we have which means that the body becomes transcendentalized and that in that important conversation chaitanya mahaprabhu clarified that by chanting the holy name of the lord following the method of haridas thakur one can attain uh, perfection in life bhakti vinod thakur confirms this in his sharanagati the last verse he describes how by chanting the holy name of the lord the holy name personified comes and takes him by the hand and leads him back to goloka vrindavan and introduces him to his relationship with krishna in the spiritual world and then sanatan excuse me and then rupa goswami says in his prayers that the holy name and krishna are non different but then he makes a distinction and says actually the holy name is more merciful than krishna there's the name and the names and the name is more merciful than the names even though there there's no difference between the two abhinatvam nama namino means there's no difference between krishna and his name but then rupa goswami says yes there is a difference because the name is more merciful than the names and how is that because you be you may have well not you but someone may have retreated from the spiritual world to go to the suburbs of new york city and hide out somewhere to try to avoid any krishna katha or hearing any spiritual vibration keep the tv up loud go to work with earphones in avoid all spiritual sound vibration but then the hari krishna devotees will be <coughs> walking down the street just when you come across and all of a sudden you hear hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari and what, what happens then we heard yadabaso pyujan kavalita bhavadvanta vibhava the darkness gets swallowed up and drishan tatvandanam apidishiti bhakti pranayanam all of a sudden there's a sense of, wait a minute hold on i'm not from the suburbs of new york i'm not even from the material world in fact i should be worshiping krishna all that comes from the sound vibration of the hari krishna mantra when it enters into the heart of a suburban a new york suburban dweller sur suburbanite is that a word okay suburbanite so all this is coming from the heart of shila hari das thakur that everything that's needed is there in the holy name all vitamins are there in the holy name all spiritual power all of krishna's personal shakti is there in the holy name the holy name will take you back home back to godhead you should chant it loudly and you should chant it constantly and everything will be all right and if you can be up for it if you can take that same mantra and give it to as many people as possible then it expands in your life exponentially because whatever you give to other people grows in your life and when we see other people affected by the hari krishna maha mantra and we noticed that they suddenly awaken with a sense that 
this is something spiritual because it's a mysterious sound that's hard to avoid. I noticed in New York, we used to go out the door of the temple right after we finished Bhagavatam class in the morning. We just burst out the front door and then we go around the block. It's a long block. And many people are determinedly going to work, although they don't look too happy about it. And other people are just waking up off the sidewalk because they're sleeping it off in a corner somewhere. Uh, you know, the world's coming, awaking up to these various modes of nature. But when the devotees who have just been at Mangalarti, been at Bhagavatam class, and then they burst out the door of the Harinam Sankirtan at the, you know, maybe 8 o'clock in the morning when, when everyone's just going to work and go around the block, the reactions you get and that you get to see for yourself are indelible. Some people awaken suddenly and they start to dance and they smile. Other people deliberately try to avoid hearing it. They pretend like, it, I, it, I don't see you. I didn't hear anything and I'm going to walk forward. And we can see in ourselves as we see them a tendency to avoid God. Like, I'll look somewhere else. Ignorance means ignorance. It means I, I'm going to ignore it. I don't, I don't see you, I don't hear you. But when we see people uh, becoming joyful upon hearing the holy name, then we feel like, what's the harm? Why not just surrender to Krishna and be happy? So everything good happens from the holy name. Prabhupada started the Sankirtan movement just by going out and chanting. He also mentioned that it's not a musical performance. It's not like... It has to be anything fancy. If you listen to the old kirtans from 26 Second Avenue, somebody brought an old piano, and not even keys, just the strings, and they ring, ring, ring. Other people brought like a cymbal from a trap set, from a drum set, and they were just bashing on it. Anything creative that would make a noise, and they would chant along with it. And the... Uh, much of it's off tune, but there's something that carries us away that we can't deny it, and that's the source of the Hare Krishna movement is the Hare Krishna mantra. So we're here at the place where Hari Das Thakur sat and chanted and set the example for the whole world. Even when he left the world and he got old, he, he was having a hard time finishing his rounds. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, look, you don't have anything to prove. You've been chanting 24 hours a day for your whole life. Said you can reduce your rounds now. And Hari Das said that I have one request. I don't want to see your final pastime. I don't want to see you leave the world. I want to leave before you. And Mahaprabhu granted his request. And like Bhishma Dev, who left his body at will, Hari Das Thakur beholding the beautiful lotus face of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and chanting the holy name, uh, left this world. And Mahaprabhu danced with his body and personally, along with all the other devotees, put him in samadhi. So, the Hare Krishna movement only has two parts. We'll review for the pleasure of Srila Haridas Thakur. One part is chant Hare Krishna. Does everyone have part one? I'm not, I'm not sure if you got it. Part one is chant Hare Krishna. Part two is teach others. What's part two? Okay, we'll, we'll do a little review of this for a minute. Part one. Part two. Part one. Two. Part one. Two. 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 two one. So if we wake you up at 1.30 in the morning tomorrow and say, what are the two parts of the Hare Krishna movement? You'll say. So it's a simple process. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, follow the simple path strictly. And we can get that from Hari Das Thakur. He was the most honored by Advaita Acharya, by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All those who know what's what worshipped Hari Das Thakur. And 
Therefore, we always call upon his name and remember him when we do our Prem Dwani. We honor him on his appearance and disappearance days. And we're here at Siddhapakul. So let's offer a prayer. Dear Srila Haridas Thakur, the great Nam Acharya, beloved devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all the Vaishnavas, if you so desire, please empower us to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and teach others all over the world. Thank you for considering our request. Om Tat Sat. Everyone who agrees with this prayer in whole or in part, please count down from three and say Go Ranga as loud as you can. Three, two, one. Go Ranga! And now we're going to end our nomadic experience from today. We've wandered from place to place without a real home. And we didn't mind because we were chanting Hare Krishna wherever we went and, and distributing tons of books. It went out to so many people. And in fact, those books are sitting in rickshaws, in people's homes, in government offices, all over Jagannath Puri right now, thanks to your work. We'll make our way back to our base and we're going to have some rickshaws outside so you can board your rickshaws come back and go straight for prasadam gor premanane bancha kapu drushta kripa sindave vacha patitanam pavane byo vaishnave byo namo namah shila haridas thakur ki jai shri harinam sankirtan ki jai shri harinam prabhu ki jai gor premanane